timeline. So I, uh, I have been uh, teaching for almost 15 years now. And uh, next to that, I'm also uh, working as a, as a professional graphic designer in companies. Um, some years in my uh, education career has been full-time uh, as head of department of the university and design school calling. We have two universities in Denmark, one in Kolling and one in Copenhagen. And um, what I'm going to show you today will be some of the some of the things, some of the courses and the way we were discussing how to prepare education for the future. I'm educated myself from this the same university. At that time, it was more like graphic, classic graphic designer uh, doing. Uh, learning identity and branding and logos and font design and things like that. But what we could see from, um, from, the, um, from the education point of view is this, that we, we needed to uh, upgrade it. Now I just see if I can, there's something in my screen here. If I can press the button. How do I do that? Hmm. Okay. I don't know how. Okay, now it's it's like it was. So uh, next to uh, still, I left the university five years ago, and um, and the past four years I've been uh, teaching as exter external professor at different uh, universities and design school. And uh, next to that, I have my own studio and I do uh, a lot of uh, work uh, from that. And I also believe that I think it's important that you train your own professional practice next to teaching so that you have um, a feeling of what is going on in the industry and, uh, and also uh, that you can teach the student that. So I think that's quite important. So in terms of views of education, <clears throat> one of the first things um, we tell our students is, is this. Um, we talk a lot about creativity, how we get ideas, how we work with design process. And I'm really fond of John Cleese, who, uh, who say that creativity is not a talent, it's a way of operating. And this is, I think, really, really important for especially the new students who are coming to the school to understand that, um, that creativity comes in so many forms. And it's not about uh, necessarily if you're good at drawing uh, or you're good at building something, it's, it's a way of operating. It's a way of approaching things. It's a way of being curious. And uh, I personally, I love the students who are really good at drawing but I also love the students who can, who can uh, figure out to do uh, things in a different way. So it's not necessarily that if you're not good at drawing, that uh, you can't become um, a good designer. Most of them do. Another thing that we also are really uh, trying to look into when we teach our students is how do they, how do they learn? How do they get knowledge? And Confucius uh, was one of the, um, philosophers who, uh, who said this really, really nice quote that by three methods, we may learn wisdom. And when we're talking about wisdom, we, 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 uh, we equalize it with uh, knowledge. So the first thing is you, uh, you learn, you get it by reflection, which is considered as the novelist. And you have you're using your imagination, you're using thinking, uh, as a way of uh, getting your ideas to a problem. The second is by imitation, which is the easiest, the act of copying. And uh, the third one is three ways of uh, looking into knowledge, reflection, imitation, and experience. And I think for the students, it's really, really um, important to be aware about when are you using these three things? It's very, very easy to use the imitation, which is good when you have to learn the programs, when you learn Photoshop or InDesign or After Effects uh, or how to do 3D printing uh, or other technology. It's a bad thing when you are Googling and uh, finding things on, on Pinterest and copying what other designers are doing. So this is some of the things that we really talk a lot with the students about 
And also from my experience is that the last one, the, by ex the experience, you know, trying to do things which uh, can be uh, experimenting also means that sometimes you not necessarily get a great success right away. It will take longer time, but it's really, really important that we, um, that we teach the students to use cur uh, curiosity and uh, experimentations. We also talked with, this, with the students about that the, um, the designer as a lonely genius is not necessarily uh, one that will be uh, continuing in the future because design comes from the school of Ulm and is based on art and it's based on science, but it's also based on that designers today, they have to have a more holistic thinking. They have to understand society. They have to work in groups. They have to work with more complex tasks. And already in 12 years ago, Saunders and Strappers was uh, making this uh, article about um, co-creation and new landscapes of design. And what they were talking about was that the traditional design disciplines focuses on designing of products, which are visual communication, product design, architecture, and planning are still relevant. But what we also need to look into is that the more emerging design disciplines focusing on designing for a purpose. So that means designing for experiencing, emotion, interacting, sustainability, serving, and transforming. And when I was working at the university in Culling, we were looking into that and we were looking into our uh, department because we had three course lines. Uh, we had interaction design, illustration and graphic design. And we, ha we were having this discussion about, okay, what, what kind of courses are we teaching within these three fields? What is relevant for the future and what might be a little bit outdated? So we were looking into what what do these three uh, lines have in common? What is essential for the designers, the students to uh, know about, uh, like composition, colors, design history, uh, aesthetics, storytelling, and uh, science theory? And then we also look about we looked into okay, what what fields, what kind of courses could we do that we both have uh, the graphic designers and the illustrators and the interaction designers to join into, like for instance, making film and animation, or we have, we have courses like design fiction or service design, so that we, we, um, we teach the students more broader um, ways of looking into designs and having broader tools to, uh, to use when they, when they go out to jobs. Because I think the difficulties in, uh, in doing education, this is, uh, this um, study is a three year bachelor and a two years of master. And, and how do you put all these uh, things together? So, and the last thing was look into on each of these three lines, what was specific for the lines like illustration, you have to, um, you have to train your drawing, uh, you have to your personal stroke, storyboarding uh, and, these kind of things and graphic designers looking into typography and font design, identity and branding and so on. So this is how we, we kind of combined. Instead of having three course lines who were running parallel, we mixed um, the, the courses and we, um, we used it uh, in, our, in our education. Okay, so by looking on these uh, traditionals, so, so the, the, the goal was uh, having these five years of uh, education and you still have to, to have the traditional foundation in terms of looking at graphic designers that they are having the knowledge about typography and composition and doing this. This is from uh, first year students uh, we were doing and also training uh, like poster design, uh, things like that. And then um, making experimentations like uh, this is from um, the school in Hoya. We did that uh, in August, encouraging the students to use their drawings and making experimentations for, uh, for a big uh, exhibition. So still having all the traditional mandatory things we do, experimenting with typography uh, like this. This is from different courses. This is from uh, Mexico uh, two years ago. So that the students encourage them to have this, like I was um, mentioning previously, using this experimentation and also be curious about what's happened. 
not because it's also teaching the students that they don't necessarily have the final result in the, in their head right away or in their sketchbook. They have to try, they have to test, they have to do different things. So this was some of the things we were doing. And also uh, in terms of teaching typography and composition to force the students to uh, go away from the computer and, uh, and do, do sketching by hand using uh, their phone to take pictures to document it and then later on they can build it in um, on their computer. So these are some of the experimentations we are doing to encourage the students to experiment and to just try things without necessarily getting a result, but, but to be, um, how do you say it, to, be, to have the courage to just make a lot. And uh, when you make a lot, there are mostly some really, really good and nice uh, things in it. The other thing is also when we're looking at design practice for the designer, that the way of working as a designer uh, to, to get the students to be aware about that there are we, we say there are two ways of, uh, of working. You, uh, you uh, can get the problems, you have a task. Um, we're saying the phone are ringing, there's a client with this problem that we need to solve. And uh, of course there is a lot of them, but we also try to train the students to uh, finding problems of finding uh, projects uh, themselves. So, uh, and this is also to, in a way, look into what are they driven of? What are their interests? Because it's difficult as an educator to know how is the world in five or 10 years. And I can see on my very, very young students who are 16, uh, that they have a completely way, different way of looking at things, of what they think is interesting. So, so these are some of the things that we, we try to uh, encourage them that they are going uh, to take action. They are the ones taking the phone, call people and make projects on, uh, on their own. And this also means that when we're doing the courses that they have to have a different approach in the, in the brief. So basically teaching them how to make an impact on, uh, on their, on their um, projects. And also we try really to look into, to get the students to be aware about how, how how, do you, how is the design process to understand uh, different ways of solving problems? How do you get your knowledge? How do you collect? How do you complement? How do you create and how do you conceptualize? And a lot of this also means that you have to collaborate with uh, our other stakeholders. Um, so, so this is really, really important um, to teach the students as well as we are making uh, different uh, projects. We also try to, uh, this is from uh, uh, Tim Brown, Change by Design, to get the students to be aware about how do you get insight? How do you learn from life of others? When you are making, when you're having a problem you have to solve, um, if you have to do communication for people who are blind, or if you have to uh, make a navigation system for people who are disabled, how do you get insight? So this learning from the life of others is really, really important to, uh, to teach the students and uh, to do observations, to uh, get away from the classroom, to get away from the computer, to go out in the street, watching what are people doing, what, do, what don't they do, because you also learn from that, listening to what they don't say is also really, really important. And I think also that teaching the students empathy is uh, really, really, uh, one of the things in the latest years, I realized that's really, really important. How do we, uh, how do we really understand what people uh, need? And, and basically what we're talking about is if you're standing in, in, other, in, in the shoes of, of, uh, of others. So if we're going to look at some uh, examples, um, just before that, um, when we're doing these projects, we always start with the why. The students have to, when they get a problem or if they define the problem themselves, they have to figure out why are they doing this. Um, and this is also what we call an open-end problem, which means that um, we're not necessarily going to make a poster or a logo. We have a problem, but we don't know what the final result will be. Maybe it will be a poster, maybe it will be an app, maybe it will be something different. But we, we teaches the students to figure out why. And then 
we teach them how to do it, how to go through the design process, how to get the insights and the knowledge. And then in the end, you, you get your, your, your final product, you get the what. So basically it's from the, from the center of the circle and we teach them out. And when I was a student um, in the, the late uh, 90s, my teachers were teaching us the opposite way. They starting with what and how, and then we, we find some kind of excuse. Why is it looking like that? Uh, and put that on. But that's not what we're doing anymore. We, we try to teach the students the other way. So it's about defining a purpose and the context, and then figure out what is the right uh, solution for this. This also means and when I teach my students, I never tell my students what to do. I discuss with my students what to do because they have to learn to, uh, to train for professional practice. And when you are a professional designer and they all will be in one year or five years, they have to learn to make their own decisions. They have to learn how do I get knowledge? Who should I call? Who should I involve? How, how do I get the right people into that? So, so we, we discuss what to do. I never tell them what to do and that's a big, difference uh, when you do that in teaching. So this is one of the open-end problems that uh, we did uh, a couple of years ago with, uh, with my young des uh, design students. We did, uh, we did a collaboration with, um, with uh, the municipality of uh, Tuna and, um, and they, uh, they were doing this uh, campaign which is called HOPE. It's about children who lives in family with uh, alcohol abuse. And we try also that the students learn to work in groups. And in this case, uh, this class, they were working cross-disciplinary. So this group were looking into, okay, how do we, what they were asking the students to do was to, how do we communicate to children that um, they can get help? If they have a, a father or a mother who is drinking, the municipality, there are people here who can help them, who can support them, who can, um, who can help them with, with, uh, with their problems. How do we communicate that? And this is why they came and they asked the students, could you please figure out how do we, how do we get um, through? And, uh, and of course, we were discussing in the class um, in terms of, because this is a big municipality, it's many, many cities, and it's a, it's a big area of, um, in the southern part of, of Denmark, so uh, and children mostly go to school. So how how do we reach them? This group were looking into uh, gaming, uh, and uh, and they made this uh, VR game for the children. So uh, and we also when we when we do these projects uh, in collaboration with an organization or a company, we train the students to to learn how to present, to learn how to have the dialogue, how, how to, get, uh, to get feedback. Uh, also in order, because this is what you do as a professional as well. So this was, uh, I think, a midway uh, presentation. This was, I think we, we had five weeks doing this. And uh, after two or three weeks, we had a midway uh, presentation with, the whole, uh, with all the people from the municipality to give feedback in terms of the ideas that the students had and also to, uh, to involve them in the, in the collaboration of uh, developing uh, the final project. So, um, so they got a lot of feedback that I could use later on for, uh, for, the, for the final product. And, uh, and actually when the municipality came, they were asking for one project. We had eight groups. And, and actually they selected three projects to use in this uh, campaign, uh, three different projects. One was on social media, one was a more video campaign, and the, and the last one was this uh, VR uh, gaming. So, uh, so also for the students to have this experience, how, how, do, you, how do you finish your, your product and, uh, and then get this uh, attention uh, and, and present it for, for the people who are going to use it? And, here the students are talking with the, with the mayor of uh, the municipality and also they were in, instructing the mayor how to, uh, how to use the, the VR uh, and how to play the game so, um, so we could understand it. They also made it uh, for a computer website uh, side and they also made it for an app. So depending on which schools it was going to, the, 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 um, the teachers could use the app uh, and, uh, for, the, for, the, for the children. 
and all the text and all the gaming structure was developed uh, together with the municipality because uh, the students are not experts in how do you how do you talk uh, what can you say to children so they developed the whole script uh, together with the municipality they had a lot of coffee meetings and they were working in the holidays to to make this finish but it was a really really a nice project and uh, they also get a lot of attention from the media and from the news uh, in terms of getting this out and and the municipality were using it uh, with their people so this is an example of how um, how we do this uh, collaboration another just very very short uh, example is uh, is a collaboration we did with the danish police force uh, on uh, data visualization this was a given task and we did it at the university in uh, calling and the students basically were looking into um, the statistics that the police, every time we have there's a crime in Denmark, the police have to make a report and uh, how do you get an overview? And the police were not very, very good at it. So the students made some examples of how can you make a year report uh, very, very uh, more clear, more efficient. So this is just some small examples of uh, how they, uh, what they presented for the, the police. They also did uh, the web uh, website or digital platform. So when um, when all these crime reports uh, and the police are sitting in their cars, they could go online and they could see how how is the violence in this specific city, how is burglary uh, or other things. So um, this is just very short. Also very uh, just short um, uh, project was. Uh, uh, given task but open end project uh, teaching service design for the second year students and they were working with waste how to sort waste and again i'm showing these examples because we do a lot of this getting the students out from the university out from the school go and do field research look at how how does thing look like uh, in terms of making a better um, solution and here it was cli quite uh, easy because uh, the signage was not good it was difficult to read uh, people got confused where they should sort the waste we have a lot of of uh, waste sorting in uh, in Denmark and uh, it's very very strict and we have a lot of recycling systems and things like that so the students were walking around making uh, observations uh, talking with the employers and looking into the different dumpsters how do the uh, signage look like and um, and then went home with all their knowledge uh, and analyze it and looking into the the whole the whole system in terms of how how does it look uh, front stage when uh, people are coming with the uh, waste uh, they have to uh, they have to put on the place and and how is everything running backstage in terms of of uh, of the system so uh, so this are some of the things um, and also building some model of the whole place to see where are the containers how uh, where do you put the glass where you put the paper uh, the iron uh, and also asking questions of uh, how how do we how do we help them to sort correctly? How and what becomes of the waste? And, and also to more, be more um, visual about what, what, what happens with, uh, with recycling. So this is just uh, some of the signage that they were doing. They also did a film uh, to present for the, for the municipality. Uh, this, this is, I'm sorry, it's in Danish, but it's, uh, it's the last signage when you're, when you're leaving uh, this place and it, it's, uh, it's the data about uh, how do you help the environment and what happened, uh, how, ma how many money do you save and, and also in terms of air pollution and something like that. So they also did uh, signage for the whole uh, uh, place, uh, making it icons instead of typography and also using colors as a part of the navigation. So, um, so this was um, some of the things. Another thing was uh, um, a project we did um, also a cross-disciplinary collaboration between uh, our illustrators, graphic and interaction designers. This was done with the second year students and uh, we were working with uh, SoundCloud uh, in Berlin. And uh, the students task was to look into user interface. How can we make a more uh, appealing uh, interface than the one they had at uh, that given time? So this is how it looked like. And uh, the students were looking into it and they were analyzing it. And uh, they were also looking into who are the competitors, uh, what, what do they do? And, uh, and they also did a lot of uh, experimentations with uh, typography and how, how can we make a different way of navigating uh, through um, through uh, music. So we, we 
we gave them these uh, questions that they could look into uh, in terms of, of uh, what does space means in the context of the net? Um, how does illustration and typography impact on the project uh, like this and, and different things? And, uh, and the students were doing uh, different experimentations in terms of how do we visualize sound? Can we use typography uh, to move sound? They put actually music on this uh, typography and it was moving in different ways. Uh, they did different investigations in terms of understanding music, uh, looking into what kind of objects are making sound, how do we draw it, personas, uh, what kind of, um, if we should look into uh, different typographies to describe uh, the music, what would it look like? They also did this, it's a little uh, noisy, but uh, they did body storming just dancing to music, not nice music, but to understand the, um, what is it. And they also did these um, kind of, they put uh, light balls uh, in the darkness and they were dancing to music uh, to track the movements and to see if they could use some of this. So these were just experiment experimentations. And then of course, we also, uh, we try to combine um, the experimentations with, um, with the theory. And we used uh, one of um, Patrick Jordan's uh, theories about, uh, from his book, Designing Pleasurable Products, looking into how can, if, if we should provoke the students to think in a different way, what is the emotional benefit? What is the practical benefit? And what's, what is the hedonic benefit um, in terms of making it appealing, making it fun to use, uh, interesting and, and so on. So they had this in mind in terms of making uh, some of the, the experiments they did. This was uh, some typography uh, experiments in terms of visualization like this. And uh, one group made uh, this um, concept that because SoundCloud is basically also for people who make music and they are very nerdy about it. So, uh, so they made, uh, just continue to this, um, this uh, website in which you could take all the tracks and you could open them and you could see uh, the different um, instruments in it. They also made the posters um, for it. And uh, this is another uh, visualization of a different uh, way of investigating music. I'll just jump on because we don't have that much time. This was um, also one of the groups who, uh, who did a concept called Listen to Your City. And they were using Advino to uh, build small machines, putting music to it, and just to see what happened. Uh, they also played around with typography and they put it into a scanner and they were listening to music and they were moving the typography while scanning it. And they were giving the um, different um, expressions uh, that came out of it. So, um, and then they were looking into, because they wanted to make an app. Um, so they were looking into the front end and the back end of the app. And the whole idea by this uh, user interface was that you were having this app and uh, when you are going with your phone, you, you have to move around in the city and the app will track what kind of music uh, they are listening to. So if you are in Shanghai or if you're in Amsterdam um, or in a specific quarter uh, in the city, maybe they will uh, listen to rock or techno or things like that. So this was the whole idea. And um, what we also encourage the students to do um, when they are developing these ideas is not only to make it in print or in, uh, in uh, pictures, we encourage them to make a movie that is describing the whole concept. Because today everything is uh, going on, it's communication uh, on digital platforms. So communicating through videos is uh, very, very important. And, and we train the students to do that. So this is just a small example of how uh, this concept was communicated um, to SoundCloud when they presented it. I'm just going to play it now. Every city has its own rhythm. And every place has a beat. If you search for it, you'll find music everywhere. Yeah. 
This is the new way to explore music. Soundscape geotags the music that's played on SoundCloud and maps it into musical environments. When moving around the city, you can listen to the music attached to your specific location. And this enables you to rediscover your city and explore new music. Music's never been closer. Listen to your city. Yes, so, so these are some of the things we do in where they are combining the different skills that the students have uh, in order to make a, a whole uh, concept and also to communicate it. Another thing that we teach a lot is uh, critical design and uh, in that the students have to more define the task uh, or find the problem on their own and uh, I'm just going to show you a few uh, concepts of that. Um, this is uh, from uh, Design School Hoya. This is one of my young students. Uh, Yonra was 16 when she did that. Um, and she was looking into greed and uh, doing a lot of research uh, in terms of what is greed. Uh, in, we are greedy for power, for love, for money, for time, uh, for food and for knowledge, things like that. There are good and bad things. And, uh, and she uh, did a whole concept uh, which was uh, called the greed test. So when we're, when we're doing critical design, we try, we try to teach the students to use the visual language in terms of communicating a problem or to make people think. Again, we don't want them necessarily to do a poster if it's not, um, if it's not uh, the right solution for the project. We, we really want the students to think about how, how do you, how do you make this uh, problem, um, how do you create awareness about this problem so that people can understand it? And she was doing this um, concept, uh, which in the end was called the greed test. And she was through her research looking into that people are maybe, they have to think about greedy for money, for power, knowledge, food, things, feelings. And, uh, and she did a whole uh, product line uh, with uh, different packaging and uh, a little measure card and every test depending on if it was in this case for food there was a little um, a little um, test that you could make uh, and they they are different uh, depending on which kind of um, of uh, test you're going to do so a whole uh, product line and again we uh, we asked the students to do a little um, communication film about it so this is uh, only uh, 40 uh, seconds uh, in which she is com communicating uh, this uh, problem. So we're going to see it. Yes, just very uh, quickly and uh, uh, for her exam, she had uh, all these, uh, you know, her research and uh, packaging. I'm just going to show you one uh, another um, project. This was done by uh, the School of Visual Communication last year, also looking into critical design. And one of the things that we're talking with the students about is that your task as designer, of course, when clients come and, uh, and they have a problem and you can help them solve it. The other thing is also, how can you be a voice for those who don't have a voice? And uh, this group was looking into uh, mica, which is um, uh, small crystals that you use for women makeup. So when you are using glitter uh, sh uh, shimmering in your face, or your, uh, this is uh, mica. And um, the problem with mica um, is that uh, it's it's not always uh, legal. It's it's uh, children uh, library uh, labor you are. Um, 
were producing this. And, uh, and when the group uh, did a lot of research to figure out there are so many products that have mica in it. And, um, and uh, their focus was on uh, the children in mica mines in, uh, in India. So they did a lot of research looking into the problems and uh, reports and documentary about it, looking into UNICEF, uh, how many uh, children are working in the in the world and uh, suffering from it. They also did a lot of field research. Went down to the to the beauty store stores, asking the the people who are selling it uh, if they know where the micro were coming from, and no one actually knew. Uh, they also contacting the industry to uh, ask them. This is some uh, big uh, lines and ask them where did they get the micro from. Uh, I think only one of the, the um, companies were, were actually answering them, but they were not really answering. They were coming with a weak uh, um, kind of explanation of what they what happening. So they did a lot of research and um, and figure out. I'm just quickly going through it, and uh, and what they did was again to to create awareness. They made uh, this uh, little video. It's not long, um, very small in terms of. Uh, because they figure out so many children were dying. Some of them were only six years old um, and, uh, and the families uh, were giving a, a little small uh, compensation for it. So, um, so they decided to make this kind of uh, beauty uh, video uh, in which they put the, ni the names of, of these uh, children who are who are working for it. So this is a little video. So the whole idea was to make this product line and uh, when you open the, your makeup, you will get this information about the children in India who are actually suffering a lot for, for producing it. And then the backside, you had the names and how old they were uh, and where they were uh, doing, uh, working as a micro miner. So the last thing I'm going to uh, just shortly uh, mention is, um, is a cultural exchange. Uh, we started uh, 10 years ago uh, at the university to, uh, to do this um, cultural exchange, meaning that we took the students, not, not on a specific study trip, but actually doing an exchange with universities uh, and, and working together with uh, other students from other universities. So 10 years ago, uh, just before the, the war, we went to uh, Damascus with uh, 24 uh, Danish students and uh, I think they had 35. So we had 60 students in a mixed group and, and we did this project called Hope, Dreams and Everyday Life from a souk in Damascus. And what we basically did, this is the whole group, was we were, we were doing street teaching in the souk. So we took them away from the university, went down to the, to the street. Uh, everyone was uh, in a mixed group from uh, Danish students and uh, Syrian students. And they were walking around and they, were, they had to find stories that they should tell from this souk. So again, to get into the, to the culture, to understand it, and, um, and then make uh, um, illustrations um, for, um, for these. Uh, this is just some pictures back in the university. Uh, and presenting them. And uh, a lot of the students, one group found this uh, uh, magic man who was selling uh, uh, legal and not legal um, products. Um, one group were, um, let's see, can I, were finding this little store, which is a one by one square meter. And this old man was selling shoes for, uh, for bride for wedding. Um, and they made a, a beautiful uh, illustration story about his business and his products. Um, and one group were found in the in far away corner, uh, this uh, not so nice looking <laughs> space. But what the men are doing here is they are making goat, uh, they're making frets out of uh, goat hair uh, to, in order to, uh, to produce uh, the Bedouin tells, uh, tents which are sold in uh, Saudi Arabia. And they, uh, and they 
they were working together with these people and they get their stories and they, they did the, the illustration for it. So these are some of the things that they do. And, uh, and in the end, uh, the national television in Syria made a 45 uh, minutes uh, documentary about this collaboration uh, projects. And, um, and I think it was a really, really good learning for, for the students from both sides. And I know they still have contact. And uh, the year after we actually had the Syrian students in Denmark with, another, with a new class and they also uh, did a lot of collaborations and uh, they still have uh, contact. So this is a way of, of connecting and, and making the students aware about uh, culture and, and, and get network because I think in the, today you, you're not necessarily working in your own country, you're working in, the, in different countries and you're doing collaboration. We also had a, a outpost in, the, uh, in Shanghai in China, the university still has, so every year the students go for four weeks, they work together with Chinese students and uh, this year uh, I was uh, teaching uh, the service design project with the, the Danish and the Chinese students and we had a collaboration with Volkswagen looking into how do we uh, make service for uh, electric cars. So, um, so these are some of the things that we also do. And we really try to, to if possible, to take the students uh, out and, and learn about cultures and, uh, and, and not only uh, going to design museums or visiting students, but actually make cultural exchange. So this was uh, some years ago, uh, we had the young students with us in uh, Gambia and they were doing exchange of skills. And what we did was that our students were teaching the, the students from Gambia, they were teaching them animation and drawing, and, and uh, the Gambian students were teaching them uh, how to do, um, what do you call it, uh, diving, when you are, when you are coloring uh, in different techniques with, um, with the textile. So these are some of the things that, that we try to do in order to open their mind into, uh, also be curious about other cultures and to make collaborations. Yes, so I think the last thing is, yeah, I, I think it's really interesting when I go around and I do different workshops that I also get an insight in what kind of, of, uh, of students, uh, what are the students driven by and also how do the different universities teach, teach the students. So this is from some of the, the different workshops I've been doing uh, around the world. This was last year in uh, Beijing where we did the uh, tangible prototyping. Yeah, so I think this is the end. <clears throat> and um, so basically, we have, um, for me, what I'm, what, I, what I'm trying to kind of pointing out is that there's a challenge in how do we prepare students for being a professional designer for the future? What kind of skills do we need to, uh, to teach them in order for them to, uh, to also have a job as a professional? And, uh, and, and I discovered, because when I was a student myself, um, in, in the five years I was studying, that some of the programs I learned were outdated when I, when I graduated. And these are some of the discussions we, we have been having in, in the university. How do, we, how do we not give them outdated knowledge? Is it necessary to teach the students to design stamps? When, when uh, at least in Denmark, I know we're not, we're not using stamps anymore. So should we teach them how to make icons for the, for the phones, you know, digital stuff instead? And, and, uh, and also introduce them still, I think it's important to introduce them to craft, but also to, um, to look into new technologies and how can we combine them? So, um, so one of the main kind of overall things we are, we are talking about is that we also need to learn to teach the students learn them to learn by themselves, uh, learn to make, and learn how to have an, uh, an, make an impact on the projects they're doing, both by giving, having tasks from clients, but also go out and, and make your own projects. What do you believe in? And then, and then do it. So this is my uh, final word. I hope you're still there. Thank you. <laughs>